Welcome back to the Church Biz Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves, and I'm excited this morning to be joined by Kevin Adderholt and a little bit later, Chris Maloney. Chris is behind the camera right now. You can't see him, but we'll pull him out in a little bit. And this morning, we're excited to share about a new course that we're launching called FT101 or Finance Team 101. And really, it's a course designed to equip and train uh, church finance teams and those who lead in church finances. And so we're really excited to uh, talk a little bit about that. And today, we're just going to spend this whole podcast just kind of previewing that course, talking a little bit about the vision behind it, who it's for. And so, Kevin, we'll kind of begin with just, uh, just want to hear a little bit of, like, what's the vision behind this course? What led you to kind of lead us to, to develop and put some resources into FT101? Serving on a finance team. Yeah. Uh, years ago with Redeemer, uh, just having the opportunity to step into a, uh, a finance team and not necessarily have, like, denominational support. And I had my background from from Dell and, uh, you know, I'd taken courses and uh, become a licensed CPA, but nothing was really relevant for church stewardship, Hmm. church finance. So I had some good, uh, good foundation understanding of accounting. Um, but really a church, unless you have experience with it, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, it's, classified with the IRS, but it doesn't receive a lot of scrutiny from the IRS. So a lot of the compliance stuff that other nonprofits have to do aren't as uh, important, I guess, mm. from a from a red tape standpoint. But nonetheless, you want to make sure that you've got good uh, procedures and policies and things like that in place. And when it's not being mandated or put upon you, and then you're working with a lot of times it's volunteer uh, folks that are serving on your finance team, you really don't have one person that has expertise, then you're going to struggle a little bit. And unfortunately there's just a lot of gaps from a compliance standpoint. Uh, Sometimes unfortunately it can lead to poor stewardship. And so Mm. just being able to see that and be uh, immersed in it on a finance team in a volunteer capacity. Uh, And then now that my role at church biz, I see, man, there really would be, uh, a good opportunity to put some resources out there that are digestible. Hmm. So there are resources out there today. Uh, everything I found whenever, whenever I was searching for knowledge was seemed like a cut and paste from an IRS publication. And you just, hmm. it's boring to read, yeah. you know, the, the book is, you know, two inches thick and, and to ask a volunteer to, to dive into yeah. that would be pretty tough. So. Yeah. Pastor or volunteer is not going to be reading from the IRS website <laughs> yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really good. And, uh, and and so for those kind of watching this or maybe interested, you've kind of already said this, but who who is this course for? Who do you think benefits the most? Who who should be signing up for, for this class? I think if you're a church and you have a finance team that you've delegated responsibility for certain stewardship items as it relates to, to the finances, and you don't have some type of um, denominational support, I think this is a great course to take these people that will serve on your finance committee, equip them with the basic knowledge on church finance and the the nuances um, of certain compliance items, give them what they need through a digestible course that's not lengthy. The format um, is something that they can, you know, download that they can view on demand, um, and not necessarily something that they have to order a book and, and open up and read, uh, but just some some. Uh, simple courses that they can go through, get equipped, and then serve in their capacity as a finance committee member. That's who it's for. If you're a church, again, you're autonomous. You don't have some denomination uh, support that's dictating a lot of the administrative and financial function, and you are relying on volunteer folks, maybe a deacon level or elder level, um, this would be a great course to just equip them with the fundamentals of what they need to be able to serve and do their job well on the finance team. Hmm. That's really good. Well, we're going to we're gonna keep moving on, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what this course entails and look at it uh, in just a moment. We're going to take a break. Uh, if we had a sponsor, this is where we would you know put that, but we don't. So uh, maybe we should look into that. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll be right back, and we'll have Chris uh, Maloney with us. And hey, we're back. And now I have with me Chris Maloney, one of the other owners and CPAs at Church Biz. 
Chris, welcome to back to the podcast. We've done quite a few of these together. Um, and Chris, I just thought I'd get, you know, Kevin gave us an intro of, you know, kind of the vision for the course, the heart behind it, who's it for, anything you would add to that uh, as, in regards to Finance Team 101? Yeah, absolutely. And first to say, it's cool just to be doing it here in the space, first time to to shoot a pot here. So some may be listening, but anyone viewing this, this is love having the space to, to do it. So kudos to you, Josh. But but so so vision for the course, uh, a lot of similar things to what what Kevin said, and and first of all, I'll just say uh, f- for me as as uh, one of the one of the two partners at Church Biz, just love to see you know this is this is a couple years in um, in the planning and dreaming phase that we're so close to close to launching this. Do see the need for this, and really it was Kevin's vision. He was he was at Church Biz first, and then brought me on as partner later, and so just kind of be able to to come in and hear and see his vision now. Um, getting ready to launch this thing is mm. is really cool so so just two pri- two primary things for me is one what what would our church need like like kevin said and and we're part of redeemer round rock all three of us and what would our finance team need and, and kevin touched on that so i won't i won't go into that in in more detail but uh but we're also part of redeemer network of of churches and we do a lot of work at church biz within that network and uh and it seems like every week there's a new church coming into our network mm-hmm. and there's a growing, growing need for that. And so constantly t- even talking with those churches, which just reemphasizes that point. Uh, I was having a conversation yesterday with one of the pastors. It's like, man, we need help. And so, so in, in our sphere, in our world, just as um, elders and, and just as, as Christians living life together, I just see that need in my, in, in that world. The second thing just as, as helping run as part of, church biz do do see the need and and we're running we're we're launching this course not as as thought leaders per se i think there's there's a handful of folks that that can make a living going around just sharing their thoughts and people are going to pay them money to do that and and that's great for those men and women that can do that but we're actually like in the trenches rolling up our sleeves doing this work uh we're closing books where uh i was just doing minister tax returns and now it's like okay let me switch and get my mind into this and now we're thinking about launching the course and, and finalizing the course content we are actually uh we're actually doing this work and i'm not gonna sit here and go through our our bios you could go back and listen to the first podcast if you wanted to do that but but we we know with our experience and god has been blessing the work that we're doing to the point not not to not to sound arrogant but but we cannot uh we cannot onboard all the churches that want to work with church biz currently we're we're really grateful for that we've actually we've been at conferences recently uh, and with other like-minded businesses and business owners that we're actually helping each other not for any gain to our businesses but actually hey can you work with them we're full can can you work with them there's more churches then, then we can sustainably help right now. We're just trying to, to grow this business and we think we can get this knowledge out in a consumable way because we can only have so many phone calls in the day. We only have so many hours. And so we feel like the time is now with, with the experience that we have, with how God is blessing us to do something that we can scale a little bit more than us just having individual conversations. So that that's another reason. Uh, I could give three quick examples. I'm giving you a long answer yeah, here. No, go for it. But uh, just in the last two days, I've had three conversations with pastors and with a, with a director at a nonprofit we work with. I got an email two days ago from from a church that I work with, and he had just hired a uh, he had just hired a new staff member who's there. Hey, is, does he qualify as a minister? Would the IRS consider him a minister that could take a housing allowance? And and so I just pointed him to a blog that we had written, and took the time to put together an email. And he wanted me to do a phone call with this individual. And and again, it's like there's only so many of those phone calls that, that I could have across all the different employees, ministers that we work with. But hey, we're actually doing a course on this, which session five, when we get into payroll, mm. actually he could just come sit in that course and learn all of that information versus he was asking me to you know spend an hour on the phone. There's a lot of nuances to that topic that just that, because they trust me, it's like, hey, can you get on the phone with me and, and walk me through this. So that's one example. Second example, there was a, a nonprofit we work with and he didn't like the way the credit card balances were showing on 
the on statement of financial position or balance sheet and um, just didn't like the way they were showing. I was, I was walking him through that. I was like, well, what, what do you really want? What he wanted was to see how much the cardholders were spending every month. And he's like, well, can you take it off? And, and it's like, well, no, you can't because then your balance sheet doesn't mm-hmm. balance. And, and so, you know, uh, so, so, but, but, what, but the, the, the why behind the question was actually once you got to what he was wanting, then it's like, well, you actually want a different report and there's a different way to get that information. I can't do what you're asking because now that report doesn't work anymore, but I can give you something else. Well, that individual would actually benefit from session seven financial review. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, uh, this probably the one that touches closest to my heart was, uh, it was a pastor in our network was calling and we're actually just trying to get debit card transactions. It's, it's a small church. He's actually hired a virtual, a virtual admin help because they're just, they're just um, small growing church and s- struggling to capture receipts and get transactions coded. And uh, he's like, can, can church biz just do this for us? And we just, we trust you guys and, and you guys, you guys just do it. I, it just feels overwhelming to me to go in and even go into this dashboard and try to code debit card transactions. I said, well, we can, we can do that. But, where I'd love to see you, if you can even identify one person, even a lay person in your church that you could designate as a finance lead that could be reviewing these financials for you because ultimately someone at the church needs to be reviewing this information, not just relying on church biz, but let me help you. Let me walk you through building a team around you that can mm-hmm. be providing financial oversight for your church. So, yeah. uh, so that would be, again, that would be uh, session seven talking about like financial yeah. review. So those are three recent examples. That was a long answer, but no, that's, that's why I get passionate about this course and the vision yeah. behind it and, and how we can help. Well, that, that's really good. And I think it brings up something that is a church biz value is we, we, yes, we do accounting services for churches, but we also have a desire to see churches grow in health, their finance teams operating in a healthy way, because ultimately a church biz can't do everything. We're not boots on the ground. That's usually going to be a volunteer leader or an executive pastor over finance. And so uh, we, we do that in our customer service, but we also we, we want to help in that way, like you said, but we also have resources, we have a blog, and ultimately it's kind of culminating in this course that's going to say, hey, let's take the basics of what every finance team needs to know Let's distill it down to a course and allow you to, to go through it. Um, you don't have time to come up with that training. I know when I was a pastor, a uh, church planter, uh, in which Kevin was one of my first finance team uh, leaders, I think, uh, we we would have desperately needed this. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, you're kind of just pulling from left and right. Thankfully, Kevin had a lot of that knowledge as a CPA, but uh, I... I I validate everything you said. There's so many leaders and pastors who you don't train for this in seminary. They don't have a, uh, at least in most seminary, my seminary experience, I had no financial class, church finance. Um, And so really helpful stuff. And we want to talk, we're going to get to talking a little bit about the actual course so you can know what to expect. But I want to tell you just a little bit logistically of how the course will work. Basically, we've, we've divided it up into four main units. Each unit will have two sessions or two lessons, if you will. And those lessons will come with uh, a video uh, lecture discussion similar to this format here. We'll have either one of us or two of us teaching with some slides and some uh, some you know outlines that you can follow along with. There'll also be audio for those of you that want to listen in more of a podcast format. It's all going to be hosted on a platform called Code. Kajabi, which has really good Android and iPhone apps. So you can do it from your phone. You can do it from your laptop. It's top notch uh, hosting and it's a great, really a great service. We'll have it all uploaded there. Um, And and a couple other perks to the course is one is you're going to have a discussion forum where you can, uh, if you have a question like about payroll, well, you've signed up for this course. You've got access to our CPAs, to me, to some of our team. You can ask it on the forums. You can ask it uh, to other classmates. You can ask other people taking the course, hey, what do you guys do for your uncategorized transactions? Or what, what software do you use for this? Um, both our experts and uh, those in the class will be able to respond. Um, and then also, one thing we're, we're kind of toying with is having some quizzes, which would be optional, obviously. There's no grade. This is really for your
you're equipping, but let's say you're a finance team leader and you want to make sure your team is actually engaging the material. We're going to have some quizzes that are very simple, but just to let you know, hey, they've actually done the work. They've watched the videos. They've they've gone through the lessons. Um, a little bit about the videos and the lessons. Those will be released. Uh, we're going to release them starting in the second week in May. We'll release those on every Monday for four consecutive weeks. And then you can go watch those. You can watch them live release, or you can go watch those whenever you want. So we realize that not everybody can make a single time slot. And so we're making this course where it's going to release in consecutive weeks. But once you have access to it, you can make your team go through it whenever. Let's say you, um, you can't, May doesn't work for your team. Well, you can still sign up for the course at any time and they could go through it in June or they could go through it in uh, whatever month. The discussions would not be in line, but you could still ask questions and we're still going to be responding. And you could see that for those that went through it kind of in the live schedule, um, what their responses were. So that's just a couple details. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll put our info email in, in the, uh, in the, in the show notes. Um, now, Chris, let's let's take a turn. Uh, I would I would love to kind of let people know a little bit about what is the actual content of the course. I, I've mentioned we've divided it into four units, and we're I'd love to just kind of talk through each unit. So I'm going to kind of give the overview, and then maybe you can point out a few things of why uh, what we're of what we're covering and why those things sure. are important. Absolutely. So uh, the first unit is a vision for faithful church stewardship. And in this unit, we unpack a biblical vision for a finance team and the practical responsibilities of the team. We're also going to discuss the importance of a charter and the best rhythms of a team. So session one is really kind of about church model. What are some of the th key takeaways we could expect from that session? Yeah, so so this is really just kind of the, the why, as you mentioned, the big overview. And so hope that in that first session is just, just a good intro class and and really before we get down into a lot of the practical just kind of get the heart behind why we're doing it why does this matter and then kind of really help start to think about roles within your team because there are uh there's a variety of church governed models there's congregational led churches there's elder elder led churches there's pastor and staff led churches and so now let's let's set the framework for how your your church and finance team is run so that the rest of the course then is um, is viewed from within that framework so the rest of that content and information is is set from that baseline and and works within your your setting hmm. that's really good I think it's good because these aren't just functions people are doing there's a there's a biblical vision behind it, it kind of gives a why to a team of yeah. why we do what we do yeah. Yeah. And I think, and, and just one of the thing I would say is, is I've seen really good examples. We would see really good examples in our work and some examples where, where just, we want to come alongside and help and coach sometimes where, of, of, of pastors and, and ministry leaders that do a great job of taking ownership within their context and their leadership structures and other, there's just like, Hey, we want to punt this to you guys and you guys do. It's like, no, we're here to help and support but those that have governance within your structure are responsible and we're here to support you within the role that God has given you to lead your church. So let's walk through that. Let's talk about that. Who Who is leading the church and who's making decisions and how do organizations like Church Biz come along and support you so you can actually work within your mm -hmm. role and how can your finance team come along? And and this, this is within that and even kind of the, the broad overview, one of the things I did mention, sometimes your finance team is going to be there for a year and you're a church... Uh, maybe a more congregational model where you're going to cycle through a finance team every year and you can view this like a certification like every year when we cycle through they've got to take this course and they've got to know this stuff to kind of to make sure that they can serve on the finance team or maybe it's on the other end it's an indefinite period of time mm -hmm. and they just need this as a refresher so whatever your model of church governance is or how your finance team serves this is this is going to be helpful to to serve uh, and and be faithful stewards of church finance yeah that's really good yeah, no, so there's, there's two sessions in the first unit. First one is kind of understanding your church model. Uh, the second one is mission. Both of those kind of go along with what you said. Uh, we'll keep moving to the, to unit two. 
Um, unit two gets into kind of the practicals, probably where everyone wants to jump right away, um, but is is really over the budgeting process. And so in this unit, our team will walk you through the best practices for creating and adopting a budget. So any any high points on either session three of creating a budget or session four of adopting a budget in that second unit there? Yeah, this is... Our- I'm glad that we've outlined that as kind of the first like practical thing that we're going to get into because, because, because like you touched on how you budget that's in a church and a business and a family, this is, this is our priorities. And this is, this is what we're saying is the most important to us. And this outlines with a church is a, uh, is a nonprofit in the eyes of the IRS. A church is automatically granted 501 C three status. So you have exempt purposes as an organization that you exist. And that's why when, when donors give money to a church, they can do that in a tax exempt manner. And so there are reasons that a church exists and the IRS recognizes the church in that way. And so a budget needs to align with those exempt purposes. And so what that budget, uh, so that budget needs to align with that. And so, uh, and even you go to the spiritual side of that, uh, what that budget says, what you value as a church and ultimately what you believe about the gospel. And that's, that's, mm. that, that's the heart behind yeah. it. And so we want to help, we want to help, uh, churches and finance teams. How do you, how do you create a budget that supports what you believe about yeah. the gospel? And then how do you implement and execute the budget in line with that and bring people and controls, uh, around that? Yeah. I love that. I love the connection of starting with why do we exist as a finance team, uh, understanding our governance, what is our mission, and then that reflects back to the budget, where the budget becomes, uh, I think you've said this before, a spiritual document that reflects what we spend is is what we value and what we care for. So I, I love love that. Um, moving to unit three, and this is one where, you know, you might have to break some of this down in layman's terms, uh, because, you know, this is where we get into some stuff that our, our finance team members might not understand, but unit three is over processes and controls. So help me understand, what are we talking about when we, when we talk about processes and controls? Yeah. So I could talk for an hour about this. I won't. (laughs) Uh, so my background is I worked, um, I worked as a controller, which means you, know, you oversee finance teams, accounting teams, and 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 controller oversees controls within an organization. So, who has the ability to write checks? Who has the ability to spend money? Who reconciles the accounts? Who who has the authority within the organization to make financial decisions on behalf of that organization? Those that's really at a high level what we're getting into. So, when you think about that in terms of of a church. Again, it's those same things like, um, so a pastor probably shouldn't be approving their own expenses and writing the checks and reconciling the bank account, or one person shouldn't be counting the offering, receiving the cash, taking it to the bank, even if you've known that person for a long time, just to protect them, just, just to, you know, you need just proper accountability and transparency in place just to protect your organization. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about controls. And even from a small church to a big church, how do you have the right controls in place just so there's financial uh, transparency and accountability so there would never be any kind of questions of of fraud or negligence or um, that, that everything is above board and that there's the right oversight and everyone knows what's what's being done mm-hmm. and that money is being stewarded well so, and then you can think about what's the right approval process for credit card transactions what's the right approval for uh, bills that need to be paid who's reviewing financials those are the things that we will get into in that session and then you can even get we'll get into some payroll topics like uh, we see this fairly regularly like uh, certain things like uh, can we give uh, can we give gym memberships to our staff as a perk? Uh, if we do, do we need to report that as as wages? Can I take my can the pastor take his suit to the dry cleaners? If so, do I need to report that as wages? All of those things. What's what's considered a fringe benefit? What's not? What's taxable wages? What's uh, what's a no no around reportable wages? What's uh, what's a benefit? What's not? And then just good practices around um, just just controls within within a church finance team. Yeah, it's really good. It just, it seems like session five and six and, and unit this unit three process and controls is really kind of the engine of of 
church finance. It's all the, you know, bookkeeping, expense management, payroll, like you said. Um, sorry, let me say, oh, we yeah. just, and I touched a lot on the expense side, also the donor management side. I did touch okay. on that piece a little yeah. bit too. Like you need to have separate people counting the offering, then are taking it to the bank, then are reconciling the bank account. So yeah. there's that, that whole side of it as well. Yeah, and I, what I love is during the course, we're going to talk about the high-level things, but in the discussion and in the interactive opportunities, um, you're going to have a chance to, to ask questions like, hey, what we use this, you know, maybe we don't have a great donor management system. What, are, what do yeah. you guys recommend? You know, these are the kind of little questions like you were saying that we get often that we're hoping to really kind of centralize some of those answers and resources in the course. So I think a lot of really good practicals coming out of uh, unit three. And then the final unit uh, and the final two sessions, session seven and seven and eight, uh, the unit is understanding financial reporting. Um, and mainly that's going to happen in session seven, which is uh, financial review and risk management. Um, speak a little bit about what we're going to unpack in that court in that uh, session. Sure, sure. Yeah. So obviously this is this is the end. This is where we want to tie it all, tie it all together in the course. And so you think about kind of the roadmap and where we're going. Who are you as a church? What how's how's your church governance set up now? How how do you how do you, how do you handle transactions? Do you have the right controls in place to to get all of that data in a format where you can understand that data in a way now where you can have useful reports? And so now we come to the end of the course, and now we feel like that the data is. Uh, being managed in the right way. Now we can create useful financial reports. And this touches on what I was back at the beginning of, of um, useful reporting and, and, and the questions that we get. Now we want to help you walk through understanding, um, I'm going to use the general terms of a profit and loss and a balance sheet. Uh, so a profit and loss is you think about money coming in like income and what you're spending. That's what you're going to see on a, on a profit and loss report. A balance sheet is you kind of think of of like your your cash in the bank, like your assets, what you owe, like payroll tax versus um, just what you would have. Like if you're tracking, um, you would think like net assets in church world for if you're tracking like building fund or missions fund or prior year surpluses, all of that financial reporting, what financial statements does a church even have? Let's start very basic. What what are the two or three financial statements that a church finance team needs to understand uh, what what do we need to send out each month how do I read these how do I make sense of it how do we make decisions from it uh, how do we you know how many should be on a team looking at this how often mm. should a church finance team meet what are some what are some best practices around that if you're at that baseline you have no idea how to even start a finance team what reports to send out how to read the reports you can you can come to this course and get information if you're advanced beyond that uh and you've had a finance team going for years we can still pull out some helpful information for you yeah we can get into the more advanced stuff because we, we've been doing this a while and 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 so there's there's a spectrum there where we can we can help with with financial reporting on that on that topic we can take a deep dive or we can start like i said at the beginning there's um there's help there on, on both sides of that yeah that's really good and then the final uh session of that last unit or the very last video we'll do is basically just kind of going to be set by those who are in the course and the questions they submit. We're going to take questions and spend that last video and time just answering any questions you have in the course. So maybe it's something that's been shared in the discussion forums. We'll have a, a way for you to submit uh, questions that you're going through. Maybe it goes back to a unit three or two question and you want us to answer that we're going to spend that whole last session answering every question and uh and we'll go we'll go maybe that one will be a long session i don't know but we'll you know you can watch what's helpful and and skip what's not yeah. but uh we're going to end with q a and uh any anything you would say kind of wrapping up the course outline any other thoughts or comments just looking down at the notes just some good teasers here that uh didn't touch on yet is questions we'll get about hey what should we have for a reserve fund what should we do mm. for for staff bonuses what do we do building loans how, how do we present our financials in a way we're trying to get a building loan what's what's a bank going to look at what what do our financials need to look at so so a lender's going to look at us in a favorable way to get a building loan we've we've walked that road before and we can help you so just yeah. kind of throwing that out as a teaser those are topics we're going to get into yeah. into as well so again we want to be a resource from somebody starting ground zero to someone that's 10, 15 years in as a church that just needs to sharpen the finance team. We feel like this can be a helpful resource for both. And as I mentioned before, I want to reiterate at the end, 
we understand that how information is being uh, is how learning is happening is changing and we, and we know we are limited in our capacity for the individual conversations we can have with the rise of of ai and with the rise of of um just all of these tools we still believe that there's a need for trusted voices in this space and so this Kajabi, this learning management system, we think is going to be a a great tool for this. And now we can we can scale this in a way that we think is going to be really really helpful. So now you can come to the class and have a Q and A time if that works for you, or you can come and get this for a really great price, you know, annual price to just jump in when it's convenient for you. Grab this, grab these resources that we're going to be continually updating. Um, and uh, excited to launch FT one hundred and one. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, you'll have, with your registration, you'll have access to the course for an entire year. So if you can't get it done in the summer even, you could you could walk with your team through it in the fall. So um, a couple other just details to say before, before we wrap up is as of you seeing this video or listening to this podcast, you can go now to our registration site. I'm going to put the link in the comments. Uh, or in the description, however, we, how, wherever you can find that. And so you can go sign up now. And if you sign up before May 1st, we're going to give a 25% discount on that sign up. And so you can either do an individual sign up, which if it's just one, if it's just one person, that's probably the best route to go. Um, or if you have more than uh, two people taking the course, you can get a team and basically it's the same price, 25% off, and you can have unlimited people take that course within your church. So we hope to, we hope the price can be fair and a good value for you. And, uh, and want to encourage you to go ahead and sign up as soon as possible. And uh, if you start having questions ahead of time, you can go ahead and start sending those in. We'll have, we'll open up the discussion forums on the 1st of May. And, and even before we release that first, uh, first unit, we'll, we'll, ha we'll be taking your questions. So, uh, we really are praying and hoping that this would be a good resource for finance teams. And really our heart is we want to see local churches strengthened. We want to see finance teams operating with confidence that they know we're doing this with integrity and we're doing this with good stewardship principles and so um, join with us in praying that this course would be a blessing um, and that's all I have uh, any fine any parting words Chris I don't think so just excited okay. to get it rolling and thanks for leading yeah. us in this and, and yeah. leading us through this podcast today. I'm really excited everyone else have a great week and we will talk to you later